What is up, guys? Um, I decided to, uh, well, I've been thinking about this for a little while, doing a video based on bands that tried to sell out and failed. And I've got their uh, specific albums from each band that tried but failed. I'm kind of glad some of them failed because if they didn't, they'd probably be doing some more horrible music. And some of these sellout albums aren't all bad. As a matter of fact, there's some really good stuff in this pile, but there's also some really horrible stuff in this pile too, so. All right, so, I don't know. No particular order. There's no, like, worst to best or anything like that. I'll talk about one of the bigger ones. And again, these are ones that failed. Like, I'm not going to mention the Black Album or Countdown to Extinction because those albums did really, really well. But what about bands like Testament? You know what? The Ritual came out. And, you know, they did what a lot of bands did in the 80s with, with like, thrash metal. Four thrash albums, fifth album, they tried selling out. And, and mainly, it was... A few things. Following the steps of Metallica, they seen what Metallica did and tried to follow suit. And then, of course, grunge was coming in the scene. A lot of people up from the thrash days really accused Kurt Cobain and Nirvana for killing them. And then, uh, but you know, whether he did or not, something did happen in the 90s. Grunge did become a lot more popular than heavy metal heavy metal was still there but it kind of had to fight to survive and bands were doing anything they could to stay afloat so i can't really be mad at a lot of these bands i mean how can you i mean they were just they were you know they probably didn't make a whole lot in the 80s and now they're making even less than that so now you know they're trying to find some way to eat you know what i mean keep a roof over their head so i kind of understand that but The Ritual, you know what? I like this album a lot. I remember I wouldn't touch it with a 10-foot pole, like, <laughs> like you know, years and years ago. But I think it's just because, well, that's a sellout album. I don't want that. I don't want to waste my time with a sellout album. But, you know, here's the thing. It's more of a rock album. Uh, I mean, just basic heavy metal at best. Um, I, You know, it's like I don't think it's as versatile and as creative as like the Black Album or Countdown to Extinction, but it does a good job, and it's a good album from start to finish. Um, there might be a few weak tracks in the middle, but honestly, amazing. Uh, Electric Crown is great. So Many Lies is great. Let Go of My World, I love that one. The Ritual's okay. It's kind of more of an atmospheric sort of thing, but it's pretty good. Um... I don't know. Even the ballad Return to Serenity is actually really good. Testament had a way with ballads. I don't hate ballads. As long as they're good, I'll listen to them. Testament wrote really good ones. So, like, every ballad I think they ever wrote was good. So, yeah. But yeah, that's Testament. And in a way, I don't know if I would have cared if Testament would have sold out or not, because like, if it actually worked... Because I, even though I like the album Low, I kind it kind of gets iffy after that. So I don't know. But next on my list, um, eh, what's the next like biggest thing out there? Annihilator. So Annihilator started putting out albums a little later than most thrash bands. Testament worked really, really quick. They were kind of late in the game, but they were like putting one album out every year at the, you know, later end of the 80s. Annihilator didn't get a good start until the late 80s. So they had two albums instead of like four, the usual four. They had two, and then they did this. Set the World on Fire. You know, this album has a lot of stuff on it that should make me shake my head and hate it. But I'll be honest, I like this album. There's a few tracks, you know, the tracks that I that I should hate, like the soft ones that are real commercial, I actually don't hate them. I actually think they're kind of good. 
Um, so let, let's let's look at it. So, but we do get some heavy songs on here. It starts off with "Set the World on Fire," very cool, kind of a slower heavy metal song. Uh, you know, bass a little bit more, trying to be catchy and you know simple. But man, it's really really good. It's a good heavy song. But it's I don't know. I just really nothing wrong with it. But it kind of tricks you into thinking that this is going to be a thrash album. And it's really not. No Zone is just a good heavy metal track. I mean, it's just melodic. It's the singer, the new singer here is Aaron Randall. He's got a real clean voice, but it works really good. And some people say it sounds like he has a lisp on the album. I heard that they were using some really cheap microphones or something, and that's what it is. He don't really have a lisp. But uh, Bats in the Belfry, I mean, already this is not sounding anything like a, Annihilator. Snake in the Grass is kind of like a ballady thing that gets heavy, pretty cool. Phoenix Rising is a total ballad. I like it. I actually like it. It's pretty good. Night Jumps Queen, one of my top favorite songs. Um, let's see here. Sounds good to me. I should hate this song. I don't. I don't. Uh, Jeff Waters has one of the best clean guitar tones ever. And between that and just Jeff Waters just being awesome, it still, it just... I actually don't mind it. I don't mind it. And it even ends with a song that's kind of a trying to be a sort of like a thrash track, but it's real goofy. Brain Dance. Kind of sounds like something to be off the early albums, but it, it, it gets weird. You just have to listen to it. So it didn't make them famous necessarily, but you know what? Great album. Well, I mean, really good album. Not one of their best, but really good. Next, <laughs> I did a sabotage, uh, worst to best, like, I don't know, several weeks ago. And, you know, this this right here was, they were more talked into doing this. They didn't really want to do it. John Olive even calls it Fight for the Nightmare to this day. He called it that back then. He calls it that now. So, and this is the first one so far out of my list that legit really isn't that good. It's not that bad, but it's also not that good. I would go through the tracks and tell you what I like. I kind of forget. I don't, it's not one I like to listen to that much. There's even a couple of covers on it. It's just too many. Out of 10 songs and you got like two covers, that leaves you eight songs left. I don't know, man. I don't know. It's, it's not the, it's not the worst album in the world, but it's not the best, but the band hated, hated it. You know, it, it wasn't like a decision they wanted to do. So Sabotage really never technically sold out if it wasn't for this right here. So they were just kept doing the things that they wanted to do. So, um, next Halloween chameleon. <laughs> I actually tried listening to this the other day thinking about maybe doing a video like this. I actually never knew if this was technically supposed to be a commercial effort, um, but apparently it was. What little I, I did read about it, I guess they were wanting some money to cover some debts. So they tried to do a more commercial album. Well, that didn't work. <laughs> And I even said, like, I think in a, another video that, like, the guitarist uh, said that he wanted to make, wanted them to make, like, their own Beatles White album or something. I don't know. This is one album that, it, it has some moments that's not bad, like, but then there's stuff that just, I, I'm just not interested in, like, it actually starts off, the song First Time is actually not bad. It sounds like something they could have done on like Master of the Rings or something, which is the next album, but there, I don't know. I think there was a couple songs. I think Giants was okay, but then I got to the song Windmill and I'm just like, I'm like, I can't. It's just not, it's just not that good. Um, the second track, Win the Center, it, it has some stuff that that almost gets kind of good and then loses it. It just does a lot of that. It, it, it tries to get good at times and just totally loses it. Not a good album. Not good at all, really. Uh, mainly clunkers, for sure. 
Um, another one. Actually, I need to do a full review of this album soon. Rage, Reflection of a Shadow. I never knew for sure. I just had a, a hunch that this was supposed to be like a, a commercial attempt. But I wasn't really sure. I finally got some info on it. Um, I guess they were, they were on noise records. And... They were getting a deal with like BMG or something or, or, or something. Um, so I guess there was like a push. They wanted them to try to go more commercial or something. I don't know. It Something like that. It didn't go over well. It's like their people consider their weakest album sometimes. I'll be honest. It's not that bad. Actually, I think it's really good. But, and I've, I've said this in another video before, Germans don't know how to sell out. Stop trying to make them sell out. They don't know how to do it. <laughs> They're too metal. The reason why I say that is these, some of these songs still contain like speed metal and, and it, it's, it's too metal still to even be, you know, a commercial hit. But um, especially when this came out, like sometime in the early 90s, I mean, but there's some good songs on here, and and I just there's something about I don't think PD's voice, PD Wagner's voice would would have been a big a big hit with a mass amount of people anyway. I don't think he has a, a commercial sounding voice. He's really all over the place, you know, in that higher range on this album. Like it just he's all over the place on it. I don't mean that necessarily in a bad way. I just don't I just don't see something like this getting huge like in the states or anything like that and that's what a lot of these bands were trying to do too we're trying to get bigger in the states but it it didn't work it you know and i don't know if rage really wanted to try to do something like this i don't know for a fact but i know a lot of these bands were pushed into it Halloween, on the other hand, with Chameleon, was that, I, I, from what I understand was, that was their decision to do that. But it was mainly not because they wanted to sell out, but because they wanted some money to pay off a bunch of debts. I guess they had a, in debt, I guess. Of course they are. They're musicians. You're all, they're always in debt. I get that. <laughs> um... <laughs> Gravedigger did this little uh, nugget of fun. Stronger than ever. More like weaker than ever. But okay. So they had, they did three albums under Gravedigger. Then they got another guitarist, uh, U. Lulis. I don't know if I'm saying that right. But basically, this is Gravedigger, okay? It was a name change. It wasn't just like, pretty sure it wasn't just a side project. Like, this was Gravedigger, okay? It was Gravedigger. And the label, I guess, from what I understand, tried to put, tried to, tried to push him into this. It's like, you could be the next this or that. And they tried it. It didn't work. As a matter of fact, the band even broke up for several years until they came out and did... The Reaper. Well, there was actually an EP before that, um, but yeah, I don't know. So it kind of it kind of hurt them. Sometimes that's a gamble, man. Either you're gonna make a lot of money, or you're gonna really screw yourself. This band screwed themselves. I'll be honest. This album's not the worst thing in the world. Again, Germans don't know how to speak. Don't know how to sell out because there's still speed metal on this. There's even a thrash song at the end. They don't even have thrash songs on their regular albums, but they put one on their sellout out. What? <laughs> and what kind of a name is Digger anyway? Like, that that's not a cool name for a band. I mean, I, I don't even know what that's supposed to be. Like, as I said before in another video, what are you trying to dig? You, that makes no sense. But, and even the album cover, I, what? I mean, at least Rage, I mean, that's just a skull. All right, it's not much to look at, but it, at least it's kind of cool looking. It's, you know, why did we put a robotic Donald Duck on here? That is the stupidest thing. I I don't know. I, 
I've already laughed all I could. I, I can't laugh anymore. I've the first time I ever seen that I had about fell over. I'm like, what what are they what? What I don't get it. <laughs> but like I said, there's still some decent songs on there, but I don't know. Next, Storm Witch. You know, a very good 80s German power heavy metal band. Very, very good band back in the day. Their first three albums were fantastic. Their fourth album was very cheesy, but still pretty good. And then their fifth album, they tried to sell out, I guess. Tried to expand their audience to the States or something. I don't know. This one's not that great, but there are still a few good tracks. It still some, somewhat sounds like Storm Witch at times. Um, the song Paradise ain't bad. Uh, Heart of Ice, I think, is okay. And we got a ballad. King of the Ring is pretty good. Tart and Feathered is definitely not Storm Witch, <laughs> like in my opinion. Um, Eye of the Storm is not a bad song. Um, I don't know. It's It's got a few okay... Oh, there is an instrumental on here that's pretty good. Actually, I, I just did an instrumental video. I, I actually could, could put that on a list of good instrumentals. It is pretty good. But other than that, this album is kind of 50-50. Not the worst thing in the world, but not the greatest. And this is the last album that had this the original lineup. And then they got weird after that. But I'll talk about Stormwitch another time. I'll probably be listening to them this, this season anyway. So then last but not least, Virgin Steel, uh, Life Among the Ruins. Virgin Steel has always been a band that flirted with commercialism. They just didn't take it to this to this, you know, to this extreme yet until this album came out. I mean, every album from back in the day had at least, well not every album, even their classics like Noble Savage and Age of Consent had a couple of total hair metal cock rock type of songs you know like rock me and just stuff like that but so it's like they always were trying to get you know some radio airplay it seems like even if they were playing some like real power metal even in like the man of war vein at times but i don't know but this album was totally a commercial album and like a lot of people say it's actually not that bad but it's also not that great it's definitely not don't have those great tracks like noble savage um nothing like that it definitely not the marriage of heaven and hell albums that came after like right after but it's it's listenable it's listenable just don't expect any like real metal on here but it's not bad Apparently it didn't work because they went right back to power metal. So, <laughs> so yeah, all bands that, uh, that's eight, eight bands, eight albums that were commercial failures. Some were more failures than others. A couple albums actually about ruined the band. Um, Digger seemed to almost ruin the band. <laughs> uh, Fight for the Rock Sabotage actually did ruin the band if it wasn't for Paul O'Neill they would have been ruined um but Storm Witch I don't know they completely like went a different direction I don't lost a bunch of members I don't know what was going on with that but anyway that's all I got to say about these albums and bands for now if you like this video like subscribe uh stay metal till next time